Alright YouTube, so it's Captain Nabs back here with you once again in uh, cruise flight now on our leg from uh, Toronto to Boston. And uh, so now that we're solidly in the cruise phase of flight here and not too much is going on, we're going to, I'm going to get, go ahead and give you uh, uh, a, an in-depth demonstration of how Chase Plane works. So this right here is the Chase Plane, uh, is Chase Plane itself. Uh, 3606, contact Boston Center now, 134 decimal 70. Boston Center, 134.74 Encore, 3606, good day. 134.7, alright, so, bring up my chase plane view here, and pedestal, there we go. And 134.7, there. And I don't know why that music is playing again. Alright. I'm going to stop the music for you. Boston Center, good evening. Encore 3606 with you, 250. Encore 3606, Boston Center, good evening. For the next Gardner, Delta, Mike. Expect on my full right. Alright, direct Gardner, expect full right uh, for Encore 3606. Alright, so we're going direct to Gardner, so let's uh, scroll through my views here really quick. And let's do direct to Gardner for right, he says. So direct to, we'll do the second Gardner, 15, enter. Target BS speed too low, no way. Just need to recalculate it properly. There we go. All right, that's probably just the way it was calculated in the meantime. All right, so back to what I was about to do here, really, which was to show you how Chase Plane works. So this is the main screen of Chase Plane right here. When you fire it up with your sim, when you fire it up the first time, it does a whole bunch of stuff, but eventually it connects to your sim, and uh, basically you've got about five different menus on the side, and then each menu has a bunch of separate tabs and ways of dealing with, it, dealing with things. Uh, so hopefully you can see what's kind of going on in the background behind as I do this. So cameras in Chase Plane are just divided into three categories. Your onboard cameras, uh, which as you can see I've labeled most of these pretty accurately here. Captain, Captain Overhead, Captain Console, FMC. Click on anything to go into it. Um, and then your outside cameras, uh, same thing. You've got a bunch of cameras labeled. Click on the one to go directly to it. Um, you can see that the outside cameras are not the best all the time. And then you've also got a third category which is the static. Uh, cameras, which these are ones that are generated at various airports in your world, and you can also create uh, static cameras yourself. Uh, so, for example, Rochester is registered as the one nearby airport, so we'll go to the threshold of runway 4. Boston Center, very good evening, Encore 3603. We are on the ground at Boston Spot 3 uh, with Logan 2 uh, too far now. and Charlie. <laughs> too far, and it's gone. Uh, but what you can do is you can increase the range. There we go. And now we're on the threshold of runway 4 in Rochester. Loading textures slowly and surely because prepared did not expect me to do this. But So you can also change the range of airports that, and, and cameras that you can see. So if you close the airports, it'll show you cameras that you set up. Otherwise, you can click on any airport and it'll let you do threshold and parking cameras at various airports. Alright, so let's go back to 10 miles and let's see if we get uh, Rochester on there. We've probably flown by it already if we're going so fast. But anyway, that's the that's the basic gist of the first couple of windows there. Um, yeah, so basically you've got a list, you can click them. Uh, you can have different aircraft types, so you can uh, load different aircraft types. This is basically what I've played with since I started. And you can load different aircraft types uh, do different views from those different aircraft types. Um, as well, you can also share your current preset with the community, which is great, which is also, I'll show you a little bit more, and import presets from the community as well. Um, as well, you can also, for any of the views, you can save your current view as a new preset. So let's do that right now. Let's say um, one that I want to do here. Uh, let's do the first officer, but let's do him looking at the de-icing 
Uh, nope. Good night, Boston Center. Let's do him looking at the DAC uh, indicator. So let's pan down. And we can pan over a little bit. And we can zoom in. And there we go. And so now that's yeah, not quite centered. It's hard to it's hard to center it when you're dealing with a window as well in front of it. But there you go. So I, I'm using these controls here. I'll show you them in a second. But basically, I've set a preset that I like, and then I can go over here and just hit plus, type in a name for my new preset, the ice press, and boom, I now have at the bottom of my list of views a new view. Go up to the cause, go down um, and look at the ice press, back over to the captain side. And there we go. Um, that's basically the first, uh, the presets. So the presets are all the different predefined cameras that you've got uh, in, set up in chase plane for your particular aircraft. So how do you get presets, you might be asking. Um, obviously you can start off by setting one, but there's a lot of really neat uh, features. Um, but one of the neatest features probably I can, uh, maybe I'll skip ahead a little bit, but I'll go to community and you can browse or search the community. You can also check your presets as well here, but you can search the community, so type in whatever you want for aircraft Q400, and it'll start searching the community for stuff that people have shared that has on aircraft Q400. It'll give you everything for Q400, or you can look for stuff specifically for the Q400. Usually it's a little faster than this. I'm surprised it's taking so long. Probably for recording stuff. So here we go. So here's all sorts of stuff that other people have created for the uh, Q400. So this is what my search returned. Um, and then the, the, what's really neat about it is as you are looking through this list, if you like certain things, or if you just want to see what they look like, run your mouse over the eye. It'll show you that view. So you can see which ones you like. So I've, I've taken some of these already from other people. Honestly, uh, I didn't have the time to create them all myself, but I've met for them and I've tinkered with them. Jump seat. That's one I don't have. That's one I like. Actually, I want to have a jump seater. So uh, if you like what you see, you hit uh, hit this button down here to import the preset. Import preset. Import successfully. And there it is. Uh, and that's basically how you how you start start finding stuff, sharing stuff. You can have outside views. You can have static views. I don't know if you can search for static views or not. I don't know if you have to have certain airports or what. I don't know what the different criteria are. I'm still learning this software. It's not, not that it's not well documented, but it's not fully documented yet anyway. So, uh, what happens if I search for Belly Q400? Will it, will it find anything? It might not find anything. I don't know. I've never searched for it. So, <laughs> just having fun. Oh, there we go. Belly view. What does it look like? That's what it looks like. <laughs> kind of like that one too. All right. What the hell? Let's add that one to my presets. Perfect. So the community is a very powerful tool within Chaseplane. I love the community feature because you can you can share what you like, you can share presets you've come up with, and you can find presets that other people have set up, and that's fantastic. You'll notice there are a few sound glitches with the Q400. The Q400 is not perfectly set up for Chaseplane. There's a few problems with Chaseplane. Um, it's uh, especially with Majestic because Majestic, and I don't know what to do to. Uh, I don't know what to do to sometimes make it come back. It seems like clicking things seems to make it come back. The sound come back. Sometimes switching camera views makes it come back better. I don't know. It uh, it's it's a little bit a little bit difficult. And part of this is because Majestic's Dash 8 software is so unique. It runs in an external software parallel to the flight simulator so uh, some of the standard stuff that Chase Plane tries to implement doesn't work totally in the, in the Q400 but uh, nevertheless it's a great airplane and uh, so I'm going to continue demonstrating with it for this for this session anyways. Uh, so the second menu, uh, the other one that has a lot of control of what you're doing is camera. Uh, so you have controls for the actual camera that you're looking at right now and you can do all the different uh, degrees of freedom so you can pan and how far you move the, the slider will affect how quickly you pan left and right. You can move Delta the Gulf, camera forwards and backwards, up and down, laterally. You can tilt, oh, you're from center, uh, two you four can zero, zoom, uh, four seven, seven. and of course you can roll, which is a little bit disorienting at times, but there you go. <laughs> Just for the fun of it, <laughs> you can do it. It's possible to do it. One neat thing that you can do is if you don't like something that you did, 
you could double click any of the uh, any of the sliders and it will reset that to its default value. Don't like the zoom, don't like the roll, don't like the pan. Everything can be reset to its default values. Once you're happy with something, you can either overwrite. So right now I started at Captain. I, I haven't saved the changes. I can overwrite the changes or I can create a totally new chain, new view with, with the changes I liked. I can share my views. I can copy stuff to the clipboard, all sorts of stuff. Um, motion effects. Each camera can have separately defined motion effects. Right now these are all zeroed because they don't really work in the Q400 anyways. Um, but various things like acceleration, so your head moving backwards and forwards when you accelerate, um, feeling blast area if you're outside, seeing uh, wind, feeling ground, um, you know, taxiing around, the bumping while you're taxiing around, all that stuff can be changed in the motion effects. And then each camera has separate advanced uh, options. And these are some of the really neat stuff that you can do as well. So um, you can control the speed at which the camera moves and the weight with which it moves, so how much inertia, so how quickly it accelerates to that speed and slows down. Uh, for, for your various uh, ways of controlling it, so whether it be with the sliders, whether it be with a mouse, uh, a controller, joystick, a keyboard, you can you can control all these things. Uh, very, very much fine tune your experience, which is great. Uh, the other thing is the options over here, there's general options, track aircraft, it doesn't work inside, but but outside, and especially for static camera views, you can track the aircraft, or you can just have the static camera remain static like it is. Uh, you can have track IR turned on and, and use it in conjunction with the various views. Um, uh, one that's very useful is skip when cycling presets. So if you have a preset that you like, uh, to have as a preset, Delta but you don't want it part of your yeah, you. presets that you cycle Mike, through, then you can do this. So I'm going to do can show you an example here. So I, if I press my cycle key, then it cycles through all my presets that I like in order. Um, but now it's out of the deicing one. I don't want that one that as part of my echo, Mike, part of my presets way. anymore. So Turn I go back in a chase plane. That's right. I select that preset, deice press. And then I go and adjust the option in this. I skip when cycling presets. Now if I go back here and I go through my presets, I go overhead console, center console, FMSs, pedestal, first officer's view. Now notice it doesn't go to the de-ice press view anymore. It goes back to the jump seat, back to the captain's side. So you can control which ones are part of your cycle. Fantastic. Makes it uh, very nice that you can have a limited number in your in your cycle that you can very quickly cycle between, but you can still have that option of having all these other views that I don't use. You'll notice I have left wing and right wing view here, where I can look out the window and see the engines and the wings. And I like these views for starting the engine, for checking for ice, but I don't want to have them on all the time. I don't want to go through them as part of my normal process all the time. Uh, so uh, same with the overhead view. I didn't like, I like to have that one sort of as a backup, but I don't like how using it on a daily basis. So it's not part of my ones that I cycle through. So that's part of what the camera presets can do for you. Uh, the other things that the camera presets can do for you, the other really powerful thing is the transition in and out of uh, various cameras. Uh, so you can set how long it takes for, for you to move from one camera to the next, and you can also set the uh, curve, uh, how you want it to look. Uh, and really this kind of has to be demonstrated. So I'm going to make this a little bit long. So what preset am I on? I'm on the first officer's preset. So let's go... Level so now, notice how long it takes to get to the first officer position. It takes almost two seconds to get to the first officer position, whereas the captain's is much quicker. So the captain's much slower now. Um, you can also control how that motion is perceived. So. Uh, whether you want a quick at the beginning and slow at the end, whether you want a really kind of quick motion in the middle, slower at either end. So notice that snap in the middle. It starts out really slow, it ends really slow, but in the middle it's very fast. So watch it again. Slow, fast, slow. So you can control how you like that. I don't like that one at all, personally. But that was just to demonstrate. I, I like... Uh, And thank you very much for the shortcut for Encore 3603. We appreciate it. I like something like sinusoidal, quadratic. Let's try that one. Again, because it, it looks a little extreme, oops, going through all the views here. Look at how long that took <laughs> to get there. Two seconds, but much smoother. 
I like that one. I didn't like the quickness in the middle. So, uh, but again, the nice thing about this program is that you can customize it how you like it. Uh, there's nothing that says that you have to do it a certain way. So uh, I kind of like the, the sinusoidal. Yeah, I kind of like that one. But the 16 millisecond transition is much too long. And generally about a second is about right, I find. Anything much shorter than a second really feels too quick. Uh, but that's basically how that how that feature works. Um, here's another neat feature. Uh, I haven't even played with this 100%. But here's another neat feature. Why am I not on course here? Oh, the F because the, the FO is not uh, F the FO's FMS is not on the correct thing here. Let's go and look at the captain side. The captain side says we're on course. How far have we got to Gardner? 160 nautical miles to Gardner, still 23 minutes. Usually we'd start down around Gardner, so we got about 23 minutes of chatting left before I have to start down. So, fortunately, I've showed you a lot of it already here. Um, but uh, one thing that I did tr I did try this the other day, uh, I found it at first I liked it, then it annoyed me. But uh, something called hot corners. So what you can do is you can set a view that is turned on at any of these particular cor at any of these particular corners, uh, corners or sides. So. For example, uh, if I move the mouse, let's say, to the top right corner, let's say, let's say the top is the captain's overhead and the top right corner is the captain's console. Now, if I move my mouse over here, it goes automatically to the captain to the overhead. If I move it over to the top right corner, it hold it there for about a second. It goes into the captain's console view. At first, I liked it. Then I started accidentally setting it off all the time while I was moving my mouse around. So I've I've personally killed it, but that's not to say that you might not find it uh, particularly interesting or usable. At first I kind of liked it, and I may put some back in one or two small corners, but I found it was more annoying. I'll be honest that I don't even know what portals and walls do yet. Port walls doesn't even work yet, but portals, um, not even sure how that works yet. Um, I wonder if you can actually create doors that you can walk th walk through to prevent uh, clipping through the aircraft. That would be kind of neat. That would actually be really neat if that's what that does. I haven't haven't tried it yet. I'm not going to play with it now because we don't have all that long. And I wanted to show you a couple more things here. Um, uh, one more thing I'll show you very quickly here that uh, we can do in the camera view here. Something called cinematic mode. And this is also really neat. And basically this is cinematic mode. So cinematic mode basically... Uh, will put you in an external view and then every however many seconds you define it will pop around to a new random external view uh, so for those of you that do streaming especially streaming of long flights you can uh, cut away some of the boredom of the long flight by uh, switching to a cinematic view and then every so often the view will change so I'm gonna go ahead and change the preferences for the cinematic view wherever it is here there it is uh, I'm gonna just just for the sake of this I'm gonna make it very quick I'm going to make it every 10 seconds, it's going to change, just to, just to give you an idea of how it works. Do I have to click away from that screen to get it to work, or do I have to start it again? Let's try it again here. So now every 10 seconds it should switch from one view to the next, and hopefully with a nice little fade. To there we go. So every 10 seconds it's going to pick a new random view, just to show you your airplane, an external shoot shot of your airplane from a new random view. Really neat feature for those of you that do a lot of streaming and you can automate it too. So I'm going to go ahead and... Ah, what the hell, I can leave it on while I talk about it, I guess. Um, so in the preferences, you can control it. So it's under camera and preferences. Disable in high vast conditions so it doesn't work too hard. Fade in and out to black, which I kind of like that. That's a neat effect. Um, and the one thing you can do is auto-enable above flight level 180 after 5 minutes. So if you don't do anything with Chase Plane for X number of minutes, uh, once you're above 180, i.e. I in cruise or approaching cruise, it, this will automatically uh, kick in. And uh, yeah, that's a nice view. I should move this out of the way just so you can admire that. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> it's a nice model. This chase plane gives you lots of opportunities to admire your models a lot more than ever before, too, as well. Anyways, so that's, that's the cinematic mode, uh, which is a really neat feature. Um, so again, to be turned on just by pressing this play button, or it can come on automatically. Uh, I'll show you some of the other preferences. Um, there's a silly little game that you can play here with fishes, which is <laughs> kind of actually a little bit fun. Um, hey, not too much that I've really had to play with too much in here. Translucent windows. 
Charles, all static cameras disable Charles control input system. Um, so if you find that you're typing something uh, to people and you keep on switching cameras accidentally by hitting them by hitting your hotkeys while you're typing, you can disable the input to the to the chase plane system this way. So that that sometimes becomes a little bit useful. Um, as well, chase plane you can set it to auto launch when your flight sim launches, whatever flight sim you have installed. You can set it to auto launch at that point, which is great. I'm loving that. Uh, as soon as I start a prepared, chase plane is there waiting for me when prepared starts running. Um, cameras, there's all sorts of stuff you can uh, adjust with the cameras, enable head tracking. I'm going to turn off track IR at this point right now because I don't actually have it, so I don't know why I'm on it. Uh, you know, kind of kind of pointless to have it turned on. I'm not sure if it's using any resources. I hope not. Pause motion effects in slew mode. Static cameras move faster with altitude. Um, you can change how the mouse controls uh, moving the cameras as well. Um, I don't even know what all these options do, how to do yet myself. I haven't used them all. I haven't figured them all out yet. Binoculars here, that's what I was doing before when I was zooming in. You can control the zoom level of the binoculars. Um, so by default three times. That seems to be a good zoom level. I like that one. So I can leave it as it is. And of course control assignments. So you can set various controls to control chase plane. The one thing in the note right here in the corner is very important. Make sure you remove those assignments in your simulator and in FSU IPC if required. So if you have, if so basically when you start Chase Plane, it, re it replaces the camera.cfg file and none of the cameras, default cameras in flights and really work anymore, which is fine because you're using Ch Chase Plane. But uh, so you can use those same keys that you used to use to control the cameras in prepared to control Chase Plane or whatever keys you like. The important thing is to make sure that you don't use stuff that's also being used in Flight Sim or you'll get kind of double effects. It'll activate stuff in Chase Plane and in your Flight Simulator at the same time. So I use the S and A keys, which I was previously using for my uh, external ooh, for my external views uh, or from my, to control my views in Prepared. I, I've now transferred those keys here. So now, now and there's all sorts of stuff you can do. You can cycle through the cameras. You can go directly to onboard, and out, uh, onboard or inboard cameras. Um, Toggle mouse look, binoculars. Um, uh, there's some sound glitches, and as well, you can use uh, you can control um, your camera with uh, with any controls on your joystick or in your keyboard. So, for example, I've got my hat switch on my control column set to pan pan left and right, tilt up and down, so I can very quickly pan around while I'm holding the control column. Uh, zoom in and out, uh, you know, whatever. You can set, you can bind keys, keys, joystick buttons, and even joystick axes. So I have my joystick axis as well bound to tilt the camera around as well, which is just fantastic because that's what gives you those really smooth uh, controls. Um, one other thing I didn't show you before, but if you do go back to the presets, you can also do various things to presets. Um, you, you can assign a key or a button. To any uh, preset you like, which is fantastic. Um, so, for example, uh, let's turn off cinematic mode here for a little while. Now, uh, so for example, I could have a key on my joystick assigned to permanently uh, reset me to the captain's view. Assign button, boom, and maybe the captain's overhead as well because I do that one a lot. And now I can go just click this button on my joystick, boom, it's moving back and forth. And that's it. And now I can move right back and forth. The, and no matter what view I'm in, where I am in the flight deck, I immediately click that button and boom, I'm, I'm centered, I'm back home again, which is great. Um, the other thing that you can do, um, supposed to be able to do it, I haven't been able to get this to work, but if you press and hold the control key, um, you can see all these various things. You're also supposed to be able to just go to automatically to any of these views. So control three should be. It should. You're supposed to move to the third view. It never. I've never seemed to get it to work. I, I don't know if something's wrong with my bindings. So, anyways, but that's my basic tour of uh, Chase Plane. Uh, a fantastic piece of software, making a making a real difference. I think in making these videos look a lot nicer. Um, so fantastic camera angles you can get that other people have created, and, and full credit to other people. I won't claim to have done it all myself, but that's part of the, the great part of the community is that you can share the views that you like, things that have worked out well for you. So I'm starting to get a little paranoid that we're getting close to our top of drop here, 100 miles still to Gardner. Should start setting up for the arrival. So thank you very much for uh, 
watching my review of Chase Plane here. Uh, I will still continue using Chase Plane. We're going to do the arrival into Boston now, where I've also loaded the uh, brand new uh, Fly Tampa Boston rebooted scenery for uh, prepared version 4, which is just, I, I took a quick little sneak peek at it the other night, and it looks absolutely fantastic, so I can't wait to land there and show you what it looks like. So uh, without further ado, we're just, uh, we'll, we'll just uh, cut the video here at the end of this review, and we'll just start our uh, uh, approach briefing for Boston, our descent into Boston, landing, showing off the brand new uh, prepared Boston scenery. It looks, or the Fly Tampa Boston scenery, it looks absolutely fantastic. So uh, stay tuned for part three. I look forward to seeing you there.